we can use the periodic table to help us guess properties of different elements based on periodic trends. In this section, we will be looking at trends of atomic and ionic radius, ionization energy, and electron affinity. In the next chapter, we will look at one final trend, electronegativity. All of the periodic trends are based on one concept, effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge, Z effective, is how much positive charge from the protons in the nucleus an electron feels. Typically, we will focus on an electron in the outer shell of the atom. The electron will not feel the full positive charge of the protons because the electrons closer to the core sort of block or shield some of that positive charge from reaching the electron on the outside. Although electrons in the same shell as the electron we're interested in create a little shielding, they do not generally create enough to affect periodic trends. So we will focus on shielding from the core electrons. Effective nuclear charge increases across a period because the number of core electrons and therefore the shielding remains the same while the number of protons increases. For example, the elements lithium through fluorine all have a helium noble gas core. So there are two electrons creating shielding in each of those elements. As you go across the periodic table from lithium to fluorine, the number of protons increases from three through nine. Notice the effective nuclear charge also increases across the row, but the value of the effective nuclear charge is smaller than the atomic number because shielding makes the electron on the outside feel less than the full amount of positive charge. Our first periodic trend is atomic radius. For covalent diatomic molecules, the radius can be found by taking the distance between the two nuclei and dividing by two. The overall trend for atomic radius is that larger is lower and left on the periodic table. You can remember this because they all start with L. So helium is the smallest atom since it's in the upper right of the periodic table. And cesium is the largest atom because it is in the lower left. This overall trend is really a combination of two trends. What happens as you go across a period and what happens as you go down a column of the periodic table. As you go across the periodic table, the effective nuclear charge increases. That means an electron on the outside feels more positive charge. Remember, opposites attract. So the electrons on the outside are pulled inward and the atom contracts. You can see in this chart that for each period, for example, from sodium through argon, the radius generally decreases as atomic number increases. As you go down a column, atomic radius increases. This is because each row has one more energy level, like layers of an onion or Russian stacking dolls. Having more layers means it is going to be bigger. Additionally, the electrons on the outside are shielded more and they are farther from the nucleus, so they feel less of an inward tug by the protons on the inside. Arrange the elements copper, silicon, francium, and calcium in order of increasing atomic radius. Increasing means you should arrange them from smallest to largest, and you should use less than symbols to separate each atom. Is it A, silicon, then copper, then calcium, then francium? B, francium, then silicon, then calcium, then copper? C, silicon, then francium, then copper, then calcium? Or D, francium, then calcium, then copper, then silicon. The correct answer is A, silicon, then copper, then calcium, then francium. We can walk our way along the periodic table to find our answer. For our smallest, we would start with the atom that is closest to the upper right of the periodic table, which for this problem is silicon. Remember, larger is lower and left. We go lower and left to get to copper. We go left to get to calcium. Then finally, we go lower and left to get to francium. I will never give you atoms that would have conflicting trends. 
For example, I would not have given you a problem with arranging silicon and arsenic in order of increasing radius. Silicon is more to the left, but arsenic is lower, so it would be difficult to choose without seeing the actual values for the radii. For ions, it's going to be important to know if an ion is a cation or an anion. In general, metals, which are in the lower left part of the periodic table, will form cations. For example, aluminum is a metal and forms an ion with a plus three charge. Nonmetals, which are in the upper right part of the periodic table, will form anions. For example, sulfur is a nonmetal and forms an ion with a minus two charge. Within the category of cations or within the category of anions, the ionic radius follows the same trend as atomic radius, larger equals lower and less. We just can't do it for the whole periodic table because cations and anions behave differently. It is like comparing apples and oranges. So we could predict the beryllium ion would be smaller than the rubidium ion since they are both metals, but we could not predict which would be larger, the lithium ion or the fluoride ion because one is a metal and one is a non-metal. We can know what an ion would be like compared to its neutral counterpart. Cations will be smaller than their corresponding neutral atom. For example, the aluminum three plus ion is smaller than neutral aluminum. This is because when the atom loses electrons, the electrons that are left are going to feel more pull from the protons in the center of the atom. There is an overall positive charge to the atom. So the electrons get pulled inward more and the ion is smaller than its neutral counterpart. Anions will be larger than their corresponding neutral atom. For example, the sulfur two minus ion is larger than neutral sulfur. This is because when the atom gains electrons, there will be more electron-electron repulsions, pushing the ion to be larger than its neutral counterpart. Which has a greater radius? Is it A, the neutral oxygen atom, or B, the oxide ion, which has a minus two charge? The correct answer is B, the oxide ion. It has gained electrons compared to neutral, so it has more electron-electron repulsions, and it's therefore larger.